Is the current housing market feeling a little funky to you? Are you a buyer that feels like you should be able to find a better deal? Are you a seller that feels like you should be able to sell at list price? Today, I'm going to talk to you about this stalemate that I'm seeing in the housing markets. What I think sellers and buyers both need to understand about the current state of the housing market and much, much more. Stay tuned. All right, Matt, the mortgage guy at Residential Mortgage Broker, doing loans all over the U.S., talking to real estate agents, other mortgage offices, other real estate offices across the U.S., trying to get a finger on the pulse of the housing market so I can bring the facts to you to help you be more informed. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, um, this video is for you. Just talking about what I'm currently seeing. Before I jump into it, if you want to connect with me and my team and get pre-approved for a mortgage, go to greatmortgagebroker.com, fill out the quick form. We're more than happy to help. If you want to connect with an agent who's going to help guide you through a crazy market like the one we're in, homeandmoney.com forward slash Matt. Now, today's video is based on tons of conversations I've had all week long. I work with a lot of buyers, and so I'm talking to a lot of agents week in and week out. And the theme of my calls this week, um, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? What are you hearing? I heard a lot of the same stuff. People who are working with buyers have buyers that just feel like they should be able to find a better deal than they're truly finding in the market. I'm in Sacramento. So um, of all the things that I see, I see more Sacramento than other parts of the country. And in this specific market that was really, really hot over the last couple of years, that feels like it took a sharp right turn. Things are sitting. We're more in a buyer's market. Um, buyers still aren't in a position where they can offer $100,000 below list. They're still not in a position where um, everything is sitting for 60 days and everything is going to get 2% seller concession, 5% below list. Truth be told, that's happening very, very rarely. But something about the psyche in a changing market, buyers expect more and sellers, buyers want it to be more like tomorrow and sellers want it to be more like yesterday right? Meaning sellers want to get their price that their neighbor um, sold for in February and buyers want every to seller to have the pain that some are going to have when their house sits for 60 or 90 days and they have to sell it at a five or 10% discount. So um, I'll bring up some stats um, just to, to illustrate. And I do want to share, I'm going to share the link in the comments. My buddy, Ryan Lundquist, he's paying attention, right? So he's always got stuff that's spot on, posted something today on social, um, uh, buyers and sellers feeling stuck in the housing market, exactly to the point that I'm making where there's this stalemate and sellers are a little bit unrealistic and so are buyers. And so what we're having is nobody's willing to budge. And so homes aren't selling. You know, we see a big drop off in not just demand, but in transactions, um, which is part to do with affordability is part to do with a lot of other factors, but part of it is just psychology. And part of it is just the fact that um, there's this stalemate where um, sellers don't want to go any lower, buyers don't want to go any higher. And so they both walk away, right? So sacramentoappraisalblog.com, I'll leave the link um, down below. Uh, great, great post by Ryan Lundquist, as always, back to the future um, meme where sellers are stuck in the past and buyers are stuck in the future, right? So shout out to Ryan. Um, Altos Research does great work. And so I'm going to quote some stuff from them. I'll, I'll share this graphic as well. Sacramento, California, I don't believe it's a strong seller's market, even though, um, you know, this market action index has come down a ton from being far right to being up in the middle. It's going to eventually shift over into a buyer's market. Um, median list price uh, is is at 510,000. That seems pretty steady. Average days on market up, up to 53. Median days on market up to 35. 53% of homes have seen uh, a price decrease. 9% of homes have been relisted. Inventory has come off of its highs. You know, in August, we saw inventory, I guess, peak is the right word for it, and starting to come down. 
So this is going to be an interesting Q4 and Q1, in my opinion, that nobody can truly predict what's going to happen when demand continues to wane and fall as it has and as it will. 6% interest rates, it's tough for people to buy at the prices we're seeing. Will that accelerate the seasonal slowdown in price, the seasonal adjustment where the you know median price starts to come down as it does every fall and winter? I think so. Um, is that going to be as significant as a lot of buyers thinks? I don't think so, right? Um, and so um, will be something to watch, right? Going into Q4 of 2022, Q1 of 2023, a big driving factor, as we all know, is interest rates. If interest rates go to seven, it's going to have a more drastic effect on demand and can have a more drastic effect on what happens to prices. If interest rates stay at their current, you know, high fives, 6% level, or even retrace a bit, not very likely, but if they did, then, you know, we could see prices stay flat. We could even see prices tick up as crazy as that sounds. So, Take all this, you know, with a grain of salt. Just know that this is what I'm seeing, hearing, and feeling. There are some outliers, right? There's some Texas markets and some Florida markets that are still hot. But I'm talking to people in Utah and Colorado and big offices that do a lot of uh, business that have similar type dynamics that we have here in Northern California and the markets that I'm more closely related to, right? Where um, things have slowed down a ton. Demand has come down. Stuff is sitting on the market longer. If you're a buyer... This means you're able to negotiate more. You're able to come in below list price. You're able to get some seller concessions. Um, buyers are gaining power. Sellers are losing power. Um, but you know it's not going to be a 15% decrease in price from this month to next month. That's just not going to happen. If you're a seller, you need to understand there's less demand. There's less people out there shopping for your home. If your neighbor sold when there was frenzy in the market and people could borrow at 3% back in February, someone could offer 100000 above list and it wasn't a big deal, right? So um, keep that in mind. Another thing that I just wanted to mention because I've seen this with some of my clients and it may be a mistake that some people are making, if you have the need to move and it's going to improve your life and you qualify and it's a good decision for you at this time, you know that better than I do or better than any real estate agent does. Today's $600,000 purchase with the rate that's attached to it today, whether that's five and a half or 5.75, keep in mind, if you play the waiting game and you say, maybe I can get this house for 580 or 575, three months or six months from now, if the 575 price is attached to a six and a quarter or a six and a half interest rate, you're paying much, much more, right? So there's a dynamic between price and interest rate where, the waiting game for 5% or 3% or 2% in price, if the interest rates go up, it might affect you to the negative, right? And those things uh, affect each other. So anyhow, again, greatmortgagebroker.com if you want to connect with me and my team, homeandmoney.com forward slash Matt if you want to connect with a great realtor. Just my thoughts, just what I'm seeing. Comment down below uh, what you're seeing, thinking, and feeling. Appreciate you watching. And until next time, we going to see.